My name is Aaron Ackerman. I'm a local boy. I grew up uh, here in Hawaii. Uh, graduated from Punahou Hall School. Went to uh, engineering school at UC Santa Barbara in the mainland. And then uh, transferred into uh, the School of Environmental Design with emphasis in architecture at Boulder, Colorado. And um, I am a local architect here for Bowers and Kubota. And um, uh, basically, me, my mission was to try to build the greenest uh, house in the world and uh, achieve the Living Building Challenge. So the Living Building Challenge is a program that was created by the International Living Future Institute. And it is uh, touted as the most stringent green building program in the world. Uh, by today's standards and it is essentially a regenerative building design concept uh, which is all net zero so the building operates uh, net zero for energy, water, wastewater, uh, waste generation um, and waste management and then um, living buildings also generate food through urban agriculture programs. Uh, none of the materials used in a living building can have toxic chemicals in their makeup. Um, and then the products are appropriately sourced um, with limits on travel radiuses allowed and um, basically an accountability of, of the carbon footprint associated with construction and building buildings. Um, and then there's some other qualitative elements to living buildings such as biophilia, um, that is uh, creating spaces that are inspired by nature um, and then things like beauty and equity um, and other aspects that are a little harder to measure but that are important nonetheless um, in architecture and in uh, today's today's world so you know we've we've done a lot to the earth um, that has had negative impacts uh, the human race has, has left a huge footprint and um, it's now our duty as the, the younger generations to find solutions to solve these problems. Um, the construction industry is a big part of that. Buildings consume more energy and generate more waste than anything else on the planet. Um, more than cars, airplanes, trains, you know, you, you, you name it, all put together. Um, so with buildings, we can uh, solve these problems and I just saw this as an opportunity to make a statement um, and people need to see success stories, people need to see examples uh, for them to feel empowered to do so themselves. So that was really the inspiration behind trying to do this. It's just a lot of people ask me why, why did you do this? Do you get um, something? Do you get a, a tax you know, break or a credit or you know and, and, and uh, that's not the case. I, I don't need a tax credit. Um, for me um, I just get to be a part of the solution versus being a part of the problem and I think that's uh, enough and uh, if everybody sort of took that approach um, I think that we would be able to solve this as a human race. Um, our decisions as society we vote every day with our dollars you know and the decisions we make and how we uh, do things how we live and so these have serious impacts and buildings are one of those things that we spend I believe it's 90% of our time indoors. That means that we are completely impacted by the buildings in which we occupy. And for most of us, we don't decide those buildings. You know, you're lucky to get a job somewhere. The building they give you is the vessel you live in. I mean, you, you're not going to not work there because you don't like their building. Um, you know, the school you get sent to. The building that your teacher puts you in is the building you're going to be in. You know, we we just inherit these things. And so it's architects who make those calls. It's architects who give us those buildings. The architects have to solve the problem. And so for the young guys, I would say embrace that role, be empowered by it, and don't be afraid to ruffle some feathers along the way and fight for what you believe in. And um, don't take no for an answer. Do what needs to be done because no one else is going to do it. It's our responsibility.